Good morning, BOSUs. We have a lot to go over in a decent amount of time. I will have timestamps down below for you, and if you can limit break through that like button, help support the content. Let's go over battle-related content first. We are getting new MSQ, a new dungeon, and a new trial. I want to do whatever content this boss is in because she looks like a queen, and I really want that glamour. This is pretty usual for odd patches like 6.1, 6.3. The next alliance raid will come out and remember we will now have to do both alliance raids to get the coin to update gear as per usual. And do not worry, there has been a lot of concern over Nofika's bountiful goods and I think I peaked a little bit of her bountiful goods in the trailer. So I don't think we're going to be as disappointed as the developers lead us on to be. We are getting a new ultimate, which is basically the current top fight you can do as a group and they change every so often. This time around, it's the Omega Protocol. The new deep dungeon, which is the same as Palace of the Dead or Heaven on High, comes out and you need to at least complete Palace of the Dead to level 50 and complete the Endwalker quest in order to be able to do this. They are pretty similar to Palace of the Dead in mechanics, but just a new experience, which I'm really looking forward to partaking in. We get new updated duty support for dungeons, which means they go back and redo dungeons and older content and update to current standards, which has been getting very well received. This patch, they will be redoing the Great Google Library, Etheric Chemical Research, Research facility, thank God, Anti Tower, Sokai, Zalfatal, and Belsar's Wall. That last one I haven't done in a very long time. In Anti Tower, I feel like they're just going to make it longer since it's already a really short dungeon to begin with. Sad for those who still need to farm Shadowbringer Relic memories. PvP updates are looking phenomenal, and we're probably going to get a ton of new and returning players since it includes this really cute new Summer Glam that you can get, and I need this for my bun. I really like the new maps and mechanics they're also introducing, so really looking forward to Crystalline Conflict. A great tip is if you do just one Crystalline Conflict a day, then you would probably have more than enough to get every reward over the season time period. This can also be said for Frontline Roulette. Job adjustments won't come out until just before the patch releases, but they did share some about Paladin since it's getting an extensive overhaul, but I will be doing a job adjustments video once we get that information. As far as we know, Paladin dots have been removed from Goring Blade and Blades of Valor, which I'm not super upset about as long as they didn't mess with the level 90 combo. It's my favorite combo amongst all the tanks visually. They are reintroducing Ball Work, which was a previous Paladin ability that was removed from the game, but adding it back in which is supposed to increase the paladin's defense capabilities aka it sounds like paladin's just getting another defensive cooldown they added divine might which makes holy spirit cast instant which i'm assuming is going to be used as an ogcd for paladin in between combos and in its burst they're trying to improve the burst potential for paladin overall Last big change is adjusting Holy Sheltron to be a damage reduce instead of a damage parried and this will now affect dots placed on the Paladin in order to improve its defensive capability. Before it would only reduce damage if an enemy was hitting you but now it will reduce overall damage the Paladin takes rather it's from attacks, dots, or anything else. Of course, we are getting our new Manderville Relic upgrade, and that's going to have more story and more content to do, so look forward to the new Relic grind coming up. They did mention in a previous interview that they're going to try to combine some steps that are going to account for all jobs to make the Relic grind a little bit more doable since we now have 18 Relics to grind for. Let's move on to Crafter and Gatherer. Tool enhancements called Splendorious Tools will be added on patch 6.35. You must have completed and Walker as well as Crystalline Mean from the Shadowbringers expansion. So make sure to get those done if you have not already. And they're quite easy to do beforehand if you look up what the turn-ins are and you can just gather or make everything before and then just pump out all the story quests one after the other. We are getting a new custom deliveries Andin, which is unexpectedly exciting to see that story as Andin is a leaf man that was affected by the fairies in Ill Make. Gatherers have an update to collectability. It will now show when gathering collectibles what the collectability is needed for each tier. This is a godsend as it did not do this prior. Crafters did get this update a patch or two ago. We will also be getting our new crafter and gather gear for patch 6.3 so make sure you're saving that material and mats in order to craft those once it comes out on january 10th and you'll be able to make a lot of money new tribal quests are coming the loperates which is going to be a crafting tribal quest this looks super sick they're basically djing in some sort of 
room in the trailer that it showed and knowing Final Fantasy 14 they're going to keep our interest with this. The Amakon tribal quest was so top tier so I'm only assuming this is going to follow suit. I will mention some side content here but I will have a separate video for minions mounts and more in-depth quality of life updates. Let's talk about side content. Island Sanctuary updates are coming in 6.3, which means new ranks, new items, rewards, mats, crops, animals, and structures. They are also updating and improving the interface for many of the menus, especially for the workshop, which doesn't necessarily affect us as you should be in the overseas casual discord anyway, and they basically tell you what to make in your workshop every day. It's an absolute godsend. Make sure to go and join my Discord as well as their Discord so then you can get those great updates. They have a quality of life update for Island Sanctuary where you can collect all available garden and animal leavings at once. Animals will be replaceable if you catch new ones and you'll also get notifications when visitors arrive to your island. We are getting additional housing wards as stated before, six regular wards and six subdivisions, which turns out to be 1800 new plots per world. So save that gill and get ready to make some on 6.3 so you can purchase your brand new home. They also added some more housing visuals where one has a hot tub attached. I want that one. They are adding a new UI theme called Clear Blue, and this is gonna be our third UI available to us with even more changing capability in the future. Portraits will now display when using Duty Finder, ability to cast glamours and dyes on retainer gear without having to remove it, which I'm really looking forward to. My favorite unexpected update is that they're going to make a setting to where you can turn on or off where your character will automatically take out an umbrella when it's raining. It is a little bit silly, but also a little bit genius. I'm looking forward to seeing all the umbrellas in Limza Lomenza. There will be a new treasure map for level 90, the Shifting Gymnasium Agnon. So start doing those daily maps for gatherers to stock up to sell or jump in early because some of these rewards are going to sell for a lot of gil on the market board. One of the other things they mentioned was the improved performance on BGM, which stands for background music on the new patch. And you can tell from the trailer, it's going to be top notch like always. I'll be doing separate videos for UI mounts and minions, and you can find that at the end of this video. I'm really looking forward to this new patch releasing on January 10th, and I can't wait to get my bun hands on it. I want to give a really huge shout out to all of the new Patreon and YouTube supporters that recently have decided to support. I just want to say you guys are the reason I'm able to do this almost nearly full time. And I look forward to hopefully going full time here in the next new year for YouTube and being your guys' go-to Final Fantasy content creator. If you want to show your support for the channel, you can join Patreon or YouTube, but just a like and a comment on all the videos that you watch here really helps push out those videos to new people and really just helps the content in general. I just wanted to end the year with a really big thank you to all of you who showed your support. And as always, if you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.